Hey guys, so this video is going to cover 9-6, the quadratic formula and the discriminant. What we're going to be talking about in this video is just the quadratic formula. And in the second part of it, we will be getting into the second idea, which is the discriminant. So uh, the first thing you need to keep in mind is that uh, with understanding 9-6, we have to go back and just look at a parabola again. If you remember from the previous sections, when you have a parabola drawn, like the one that we have right here, and you are being asked to find the solutions to that parabola, the solutions are the points where the parabola crosses the x-axis, marked by these blue dots right here. When you have a graph of a parabola, you can very easily see the solutions. In section 9-4, we got examples that looked like this, 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. This equation is going to form a parabola and that parabola is going to have solutions. But since we don't have a graph, the method of figuring out the solutions is factoring. So uh, the method you would use to factor this specific example is where you would start off by multiplying a times c, and uh, oh, and that would be uh, negative six, by the way, not positive six. Let me just fix that. And basically, you would factor and you would get um, 2x minus 1 and then x plus 3. And by the way, factoring a trinomial like this comes from section 8-6. So if you have to go back and rewatch that video, please go do so. Also, from the previous lesson, we talked about how when you want to find the solutions to a trinomial like this, you uh, first have to factor, like we have down here, but then you have to set both of your binomials equal to 0. So when you set x plus 3 equal to 0, you can very easily see that you would have to subtract 3 on both sides, and then 0 minus 3 is going to leave you with negative 3. That's why you see that being the first answer. Uh, the 2x minus 1, when you set that equal to 0, <clears throat> you would have to add 1 to both sides and then divide by 2, and you would get x equals positive 1 half. That is a very quick review of what was discussed in 9-4, where you basically have to uh, factor your trinomial into your binomials, and then you set your binomials equal to zero, and then you figure out what x is by solving for x. And these are our solutions, one-half and negative three. But all of that is what we were doing. What we're going to be doing currently in this section is using the quadratic formula to directly compute the answers, rather than doing all of the factoring. So let's look at what the quadratic formula is. All right, so uh, the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And all of that is over 2a. It does look like a lot, but the more you practice it, the better it sticks in your head. This is the quadratic formula. There are songs that help you remember it. If you look on YouTube, there's a little song video thing that uh, you can play and it'll kind of teach it to you. Uh, but honestly, if you just practice it enough, it should kind of stick in your head. You have to remember standard form though. You have to remember what A, B, and C are. So let's just look at a quick example and then kind of work through it. Uh, so A, B, and C are two, three, and negative five. And what you're gonna be doing with those values is plugging them into the formula. So let's see what that would look like. Negative b is going to be, uh, well, b is, b is 3, so when you take the negative of it, you're going to be getting negative 3. The next part of the formula, it says plus minus, so that's why the plus minus sign has been written down. And then we have the square root sign, so that's why I have the square root sign written here. The first thing that goes under the square root, b to the second power, so 3 to the second power. The next part of the formula, it says minus 4, so just write down minus 4. Minus 4 is multiplying a, which is multiplying c. a is 2, and c is negative 5. So that completes the numerator. We have 3 squared, which is 9, minus 4 times 2 times negative 5. The denominator, it says 2 times a. a is 2, so we have 2 times 2. This basically is showing you what you're going to be doing with the quadratic formula, and the rest of this problem is just using your order of operations in order to simplify your answer. So uh, the rest of this problem is very downhill. You have now just seen most of what you are basically doing.
The first thing is uh, 2 times 2 is 4. Very easy to do that. You can do a lot of this in your head. I'm just going to, of course, write it out in full because this is for the sake of the notes. 2 times 2 is 4. The uh, negative parentheses 3, well, that's going to just become negative 3. We would then have the plus minus sign. 3 squared is 9. And then negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. And negative 8 times negative 5 is positive 40. So we have a positive 40 right there. Next, 9 plus 40. Well, that's going to be 49. And then 49 is under the square root sign, so we're going to take its square root, and we're going to get 7. So right now, we have the setup for what our final answer will be. Negative 3 plus or minus 7 divided by 4. So what you have to do is take negative 3 and then first add 7 to it, and then divide that by 4. Negative 3 plus 7 is going to be 4. And then the 4 in the denominator, well, that just tags along. Or you can do negative 3 minus 7. Negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10. And then that would be over 4 as well. So basically, there's a lot of order of operations happening here. When you practice these problems, you will get better at this part of the square root where a lot of mistakes are likely to be made. Just watch your negative signs, follow the order of operations, and always practice with showing your work. The final answer, by the way, is not what you see down here in the corner. Uh, what you really have to do is simplify your fractions. 4 over 4, that becomes 1, and negative 10 over 4 becomes negative 5 over 2. Those are the answers, and you are done with the problem. What we just basically determined are the values where our parabola would cross the x-axis. So as you can see in this little diagram, all that we know is that the parabola is going to cross at negative 5 over 2 and positive 1. We don't know if the parabola is going to go that low, or maybe it's going to be wider. We don't know that much information yet. We just know where the solutions are, and that's all we've been asked. So this is basically how you do a quadratic formula problem. Uh, the only other problems that you're going to deal with are ones that involve bigger numbers. So uh, let's just look at one like that, a little more complicated. You will get decimal answers, and it is okay. So let's look at an example where you get decimal answers. Uh, this is a problem that comes from the textbook. Basically, a person is throwing a shot put through the air, and then the arc that the shot put would follow, well, that's going to behave like a parabola. The question is asking us, what is the horizontal distance where the uh, shot put would land? And what they're letting you know is that this formula, uh, negative 0.04x squared plus 0.84x plus 2, that parabola is modeling the path that the shot put would travel. You will also notice that in this example, we have the y-axis right here, and then the x-axis right here. And if the parabola is going to go up and then hit the ground, this is very important, where the parabola lands, well, that's a point on the x-axis, meaning that where it lands is a solution to the parabola that we have right here. So basically, we need to factor this parabola or use the quadratic formula to directly compute the answers. And that's what we're about to do. So again, a, b, and c are those numbers respectfully. Uh, the quadratic formula again, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We're just going to plug in the values of a, b, and c where they belong. b is uh, 0.84, so because it says negative b, it has to be negative 0.84. Plus or minus the square root sign, it's always there. Uh, b squared, 0.84 to the second power, minus 4. And then a is negative 0.04, and then c is 2. That's the numerator. All of that goes over 2 times a, which is negative 0.04 again. Now, as you can see, you have a lot of decimals going on here. You will need to use a calculator to do all of this. The order of operations is not something I'm going to heavily get into right now, but to basically talk about the tough part, uh, the, point eight, the negative 0.84, very straightforward. You have the plus minus square root sign. Figuring out what goes under the square root sign is probably the most challenging thing. You basically have to work out what is under the square root sign separately on a calculator. If you need help doing that, please come in and ask me. I'm just going to show you what you get underneath the radical sign, and if you need to practice that a few times, well, then go for it. Uh, the denominator, 2 times negative 0 0.04, well, that is negative 0 0.08. So again, what we have under the radical sign right here is the result of doing 
0.84 to the second power, and then you will subtract 4 times 0 0.0, uh, negative 0 0.04 times 2. Just work it out separately. Uh, what I can tell you from class today is that when you square the 0.84, I believe you get 0 0.7, uh, what was it, 7, 6, something like that, something involving a 7. Um, and then when you do the, uh, the negative 4 part over here, uh, you're going to get positive 0.32. And when you add those numbers together, uh, that will give you the result that you see down here, the uh, 1.0256. In any case, uh, now that you have everything set up, you need to do negative 0.84, and you need to add the square root of 1.0256, and then divide that by negative 0.08. Basically, when you walk through it, uh, you get negative 2.16, or 23.16. You will notice that we have the squiggly equal sign. That is the approximately equal to sign, meaning I had to round at the end of this problem. So, uh, so always round when you have those decimals that repeat forever. It is perfectly fine to have an answer with uh, two decimal places, just like you see right here. Oh, and uh, also, since this problem is dealing with uh, distance traveled, well, it wouldn't make sense that the shot put would travel a negative 2.16 meters. Uh, it would only make sense if it is the positive answer. So that's why that is the answer, 23.16. All right, so um, here are some practice problems. These are going to be the only practice problems that you are going to get directly from me. And basically, uh, what you should do is pause the video, solve as many of these as you can, on the next slide, you're going to see the answers, and then, of course, go back and rework them. Show your work. Write everything out so that I can help you during class to make corrections if you get the wrong answers. Really quickly, the problems that you see bracketed, 12, 15, 20, 18, and 21, notice how these are not in standard form. Like all of the other examples, all equal zero. Oh, I forgot a couple right up here. Uh, in any case, if you do not already have your function in standard form, well, you need to use oper inverse operations to do that. So, for instance, in number 12, your first step would be to add 96 to both sides so that your function would become 3x squared plus 44x and then plus 96. And then that equation will now equal 0, and you can use the quadratic formula to get your answer. Uh, so, uh, again, the quadratic formula, it's going to be used to solve quadratic functions where factoring is not really easy. So with all of these, uh, take a moment, practice, pause, and when you hit resume, you're going to see the answers on the next page. Oh, and by the way, with number 22, you're definitely going to have to use a calculator. That's just like the shot put problem, so definitely make sure you get that one in. But all right, guys, so uh, pause the video, and we'll see you back in a second. All right, here are the answers. Uh, hopefully you got a lot of them right. Here's a quick summary of what we did. There's the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Have it memorized. The quadratic formula, which I'm abbreviating QF, it helps to solve quadratic functions when factoring is not that easy. You, as you can see from a lot of your answers, you have a lot of whole numbers, but you also have a lot of fractions. And that's what's going to happen when you deal with the quadratic formula. And that's okay. You just have to make sure you are plugging in everything correctly. But all right, guys, with that being said, that is the first part of the quadratic formula. Uh, practice makes perfect, so please, please, please do all of these problems. Check with me if you have questions. And here is the Parabola Chef. See you guys in class.